What's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Cowboy Muhammad again, right here with Premier Leather Crafters, and showing you another video about how to take your work from just a regular look more to a professional look. And the two tools that we're going to cover today, or the main tool we're going to cover today, is the edge, the edger, and the edge rounder. Now these two tools are two of my most prized possession pieces. I bought the Edge Rounder back in 2003, 2004. I was taking a leather class down at Tandy in Birmingham, Alabama. And the instructor, a guy by the name of Chance Chancellor, talked me into buying this piece. Actually, he didn't have to do too much talking because I saw this tool actually in work. He was using it. And I was like, man, I said, what is that? And he was like, it's called an Edge Rounder or Edge Beveler. He said, we sell these. And every craftsman, he told me at that time, every craftsman needs this. And they come in various sizes, two, three, fours, and I think they come in fives. But like I said, he didn't have to do too much talking because I saw actually what this tool can do. Great tool to have in your arsenal. And this tool here is a edger. You can see that there's two different, entirely made two different ways, but pretty much perform the same function. Except my edger is a little bit more aggressive. And I'll show you how both of these tools work uh, in conjunction with, again, with making your, your whatever project that you're working on um, more professional. Now, belts. Now, the edge beveler, let's get into the edge beveler. The edge, what I call the edge, well, edge rounder. Um... This one, it doesn't round off the edges too much as in, as much as it, it takes the corner off. And as you're pushing this down the side of that leather piece or whatever project you're working on, it not only takes the corner off, but it kind of skives it back a little bit. As you can tell in the way that it's made, because this has a cutting function on both sides of the fork here. So when you're pushing it down, it not only is cutting the corner off, but it's skiving it back just a little bit. And you'll use this on both sides of the belt. Now, I use this tool more if I'm doing snakeskin belts or if I'm going to be, uh, if I'm going to, to leather braid a belt because it cuts it back, it, it skives it back so much that it's not so much, uh, it doesn't take so much uh, leather lacing to braid it. And it also takes, when you put that, that snake skin on there, it kind of tapers it off a little bit and makes your work just look beautiful. Beautiful tool to have. Now the edge rounder, I use this a lot as well as in belts too. Um, not so much as with snake belts or, or if I'm doing any type of exotic print belt or anything like that. But it just makes it more professional looking to have that edge rounded off. This one gives it a little bit more rounded shape and it works in conjunction with this little jewel here, my Edge Slicker. You can buy these also at Tandy, um, anywhere from a dollar or two, I think no more than two, three bucks. Um, sometimes you can catch them on sale, they'll have them running on sale for a dollar. I encourage you to buy as many of these as you can. Now I've had this one for a very long time, so they last a long time because they're made of the polyurethane so they don't take a beating really um, but as you can see how it's rounded in that section in the middle right there that's because this tool helps it get to this shape so after you round it you'll take your edge slicker and you'll just go up and down the sides of this just like this and it slicks the edge to make it have a little bit more professional look. Let me show you how these two tools work. Now, we're gonna start with the edge, the edger. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna set this on the corner of that belt. And I think you guys can see just what this does. This is the corner of that belt. And it also, like I said, it bevels it down a little bit. And you want to do this on both sides. Same thing. It, whichever tool you use, you want to bevel or edge both sides. So it makes it a little bit more better looking. Now my edge-er, 
We're going to use the same principle and technique. And we're just going to go down the side of the belt. And it also takes that off too as well. Takes that corner off. And you're going to do this again. Like I said, you're going to do it on both sides of the piece. Doesn't matter what project that you're working on. Whether it's wallets uh, or what have you. You want to do it on both sides. And what we're going to do, uh, and we're still not done yet. I was in Chattanooga, Tennessee, um, which is a great part about where I live. Uh, I'm an hour and 15 minutes, both from Tandy and Birmingham, and I'm an hour and 15 minutes from the uh, Tandy and Chattanooga, which I think the, the Tandy factory in Chattanooga has closed. But that was what was so great um, at that particular point in time because I picked up little, what I call little nuggets, information from both locations. Uh, Chance was my main go-to guy in Birmingham. And there was another guy that was in Chattanooga named Bill. Now, Bill's been crafting ever since the 50s. So this guy has been around and dealing with leather work for a long time. Uh, and as I was in Chattanooga, I saw Bill working with this stuff here. Wax burnishing ink. And it, it used to come in two different colors. This is a discontinued product now. Uh, Tandy now sells Edge Coat, um, which comes in multiple colors too. But this is the old school stuff here. This right here is the great stuff. And I bought two bottles of each color, black and brown. And wow, it gives a great finish on your work. Now, thinking back to when my uncle was doing old school work, they used to use wax, real wax, to edge uh, or burnish the edges of their pieces. Now, my uncle, this was back in the early, mid-70s. And I remember uh, seeing him do this. He would take it and he'll put his, uh, um, that, that wax on the edge and he'll just go up and down with a thing of wax, which, again, old school crafting is the way to go. And you can buy a camera for, what, 50 cent at the Dollar General? And you just rub the edge of that. And then you come back with your, your dye on top of it. And then you just take us, just slick it down. And it'll all make it come uniform and beautiful, pretty. That old school crafting, man. Way to go. Um, but Bill also told me about good old denim. Denim is the best material. To burnish any piece. It doesn't matter what it is. Because heat and friction is your friend in leather crafting. And it can take your work to a whole new different level. But let me show you how this burnishing cream works. And basically what you'll do is you just take a good old dauber. And I always keep my daubers. I uh, sacrifice my coffee cup. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. But you know, hey, it's all for the job. But we're going to take that and just soak it in water. And you can use your dollars over and over again. And we're going to take our burnishing cream. Now this stuff is a great mix. And we're going to just rub that onto the edge. Can you see this, guys? Okay, what are we going to do? Let me get closer. And we're going to take this and we're just going to rub that into the edge. After you've already edged your corners off and slicked those off, we're just going to dye those. One of these days I'll show you guys and explain to you why about saving your, your daubers. And you can actually burn those. I mean, all types of secrets and techniques to keep your work right. And we're just going to take that denim and we're just going to Heat, heat it up real good. And you're heating it by pulling that denim across the ends and the colors up there. On the corners. And this is what I saw Bill doing. When I walked into that leather factory up there in Chattanooga, I walked in and he was doing this. Just good old friction and heat. And I know I was in there for probably about 20, 30 minutes picking up some supplies. And when I got ready to check out, 
little old Bill was still doing the same thing on this piece. So now people can pretty much understand when I tell you that it takes about two and a half hours to do a belt, and that's just a plain belt. That doesn't include the carving work or the, the stamping work and all of that stuff. When I tell you it takes about two hours, this is now you know why it takes about two hours. Because this is going to be the difference between having flea market quality and professional quality. And I'll get into it in another video of about when I was on the festival circuit. And it was a lot of steps that I was missing. Because the, when you're on the festival circuit or when you're working at flea markets, if you're not pre-making this stuff, you know... It, it, you, you can't sit there and do a belt two hours at a flea market and you got somebody waiting. You don't want to have anybody hold up, held up for two hours waiting on a belt because you got to burnish the ear. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Now, I want you guys to see this. Ah, video is really not doing it any justice. But what happens, it gives it that it the burnishing actually burns the end that's what that heat and that friction does and as it works with the burnishing wax it kind of, of gives it that that sealing store-bought look that's what they're doing here that is just amazing and you can use this on any project that you're doing any project Burnishing wax also works great if you're making wallets because it takes those two pieces that you have put together and it actually burns them together. So you can't tell that it's two pieces on the edge, even though you know that it's two pieces there, but you can't see that line, that gap where the separation of the two pieces have been glued together. I hope that this guys, uh, I hope that this information helped you out and I hope that this video um, you'll take that and believe me, all of this information is nothing new that I come up with. I've, I've been blessed and fortunate to learn from two different crafters with over 100 years experience or close to 100 years experience. I know Bill has about 50 and I know Chance has about 20 to 30. And then with all of the knowledge that my uncle had instilled in me from the 70s all the way up until I started doing this business seriously. Man, you got over a hundred years of business. You know, old school crafting mixed with a little new school crafting. Hey, guaranteed one. This is Robert the Cowboy Muhammad. I hope this guy's helped you out. We'll see y'all on the next one.